Welcome back to the Event Time video tutorial series. In video number seven, we're going to be covering the action user add-on, the install, setup, and the display, um, what it looks like on the front end. So let's jump into the Event Time settings here. Uh, we'll go underneath the Event Time settings tab and we're gonna choose action user. Uh, this is only going to appear once you install the plugin and activate it um, in the back end. So uh, let's, before we jump into the settings, let's go to the user capabilities tab up top because we have a lot of people asking, how do I, how does my editor uh, do anything to the events? Well, we've created this um, tab here to allow you to, to change that. So if we go to the editor role, obviously they aren't allowed to do anything. So you can allow them to do whatever you want to with the event on calendar uh, plugin. If you want to set your contributor uh, roles and permissions, then you can do that here. So. It's up to you what you want to do. Um, usually it's only an administrator and an editor that can do things. Um, other than that, you don't want people submitting or changing events on your website. Let's go back to the general tab. And here we can see um, the front end submission form settings. Uh, really simple option here. Block form submissions to logged in users only. This basically says your uh, event submissions uh, user has to be registered on your WordPress site and they have to be logged in before they can even submit an event. Um, that's kind of smart sometimes if you want to prevent spam from happening on your form. Um, that way they can't even be able to submit anything. Um, header text, subheader text, this is for text that will be above your form if you need to provide any um, direction to them like please submit all fields that are required or please allow 24 hours before your, your event is submitted. Uh, before uh, you get a response. So just basic stuff. Um, this tab here is typically on draft when you first turn on the plugin. Uh, so I change it to publish always if I'm having um, my logged in users submit events. If you want to approve events before they actually show up on your web page, you might want to leave that as draft. Um, that way as an admin, you have to approve the events. But for this uh, demo, when I submit it, I'm going to have it published so we don't have to change that. Um, you know what, let's leave it as draft so I can show you how to approve it when it's, when it's done. Um, assign logged in user to the event. This will assign that specific user an ID number and that event to that ID number for themselves. So when you go to a front end and say this person is a very popular person in your city and they have maybe 20 events going on, you can actually create their own calendar yourself and only show those users events per their ID. Um, and we can show you that later on. Um, and if you have questions, if, if we don't have a video done for that yet, just ask us and we can show you. Um, you can also collect the category type for um, all the submitted events. Um, and this only you can only do that here, and it's one option. It's You can choose one category for all the submitted events um, or the second category. Um, basically, if you have like online events or local public events, you can assign that to those specific users, um, and it'll only show theirs. Basically, for the form fields, uh, these are all empty by default, so you want to come in here and make sure you check these options or you won't see them on your on your uh, events form. Uh, event details, yeah, I want to know what the event's about and have some text. I want to be able to read something, so check that. Uh, location, name, and address, yeah, I want to know where it's at uh, and the name of the building or the event venue where it's at. Uh, the organizer, if you guys are going to be having, again, um, say you have someone very popular and you want your public to know, hey, you know, this person's putting this event on, um, then that'll display on the front end. Um, we are allowing our user here to select the event type category. Um, the first one and the second one, these are the ones that are made by you um, and whoever you give permissions to to create those. Um, they cannot be created through the form, but they can be added to the form once they've been um, created, for instance, under the events, event type, event type two. So you can go in and create as many of those as you want. On the front end of the form, they will display. Uh, we're giving our, our user an image to load. We're also going to give collect the full name, their email address, um, the user interaction. This allows your, your user uh, who's submitting the events to let your other users who's, who are reading the events to use the light box, the um, slide down window, or the external URL. 
Uh, and the, one of the most important ones too that uh, Ashan made sure to add was the CAPTCHA field validation. So all those are gonna be um, important to have. There's more you can add. You can even add more form fields if you'd like or change the names of these um, per the language settings that we'd covered in video two. Um, notifications really quick. You can notify the admin of the um, event submission, which is kind of cool. So anytime someone submits an event, they'll get an email address. Um, number two, the notify the submitter when they submit an event. So just to verify that they know it was submitted, they'll get an email. And also, uh, if their event is being held by the admin yourself, um, you can um, set it as a draft and when it's approved or published, it will send them an automatic email to, um, to their email that they put in through the system. Okay, front end messages. These are just success message and a, an error message for the missing fields. Um, if you want, you can put um, something for the success message like, uh, thank you for submitting your events. It's going to take about 48 hours before uh, we can approve your event or before it's reviewed uh, by our admin and paste, or, you know, placed on our event page. So something like that. If you don't put anything, there is a default message that will show up. So let's check that out. We're going to go to our pages here and we're going to add a new page and call it action user page. Really simple. Click the add events on short code button here. You'll see the new option for action user event submission form value. It's, it generates the short code. We can just hit the button there or copy and paste it. And that's it. We're going to hit publish. And we're going to view that page. There we go. Now, here's our form that we created. All the options. The event name. We're going to call it uh, Akron Zoo Day. My daughter loves going there, so we're going to give it a value of uh, April 27th. Let's see if the weather's nice that week. Um, 12 a.m., we're going to get there at midnight, which is not really open, but hey, this is just a demo. So, 1 in the afternoon. Um, I'm not choosing either of these options all day or no end. You, you can give them the ability to do that. Event details. Let's meet at the zoo. Okay. Yeah. Location name. Akron Zoo. Um, I've already pre-typed this in here once, so there we go. Event organizer. Uh, let's give it a value of Roger Rabbit. He's a cool guy. Um, now we're gonna choose our first category, which I said before are already pre-populated by the admin or the events that you, the categories you created before. Uh, let's call it getaways. Uh, select an image. I'm just gonna use a thumbnail here for that and a slide down event card or pop-up. Let's do a pop-up window, which is my favorite. So enter the validation code or the CAPTCHA code. Let's submit that event. And there we go, the event has been successfully saved. Again, if you change that success message in the back end, you can say it, have it say whatever you want. Uh, let's go back to our events because if you remember, I made the event turn to a um, uh, a draft. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't make it a draft. I made it published. So here you can see my events. Akron Zoo Day. Um, the status is published. It is live. It's under the entertaining getaways uh, category, and there's the date. Let's go ahead and take a look at our pages here, and view our full calendar, or whatever page you have your calendar on, just to make sure that event came through from the back end. Okay, there we go. April twenty seventh. Akron Zoo Day, my user submitted the event. Here's the event. There's an image. You can expand that by default. I just have it um, minimized for now uh, by the settings. Um, there's the time, location. Um, I chose that location and it automatically gave the Akron Zoo a, a Google Maps uh, location there. There's the details. I can add this to my calendar, Google Calendar or my iCalendar. And we're good to go, guys. Uh, that's it for the action user um, add-on. And if you have any questions, hit us up on the forum, and we'd be glad to help you.